Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm gonna to be taking the best downhill suspension in the world, the Olin's DH38. We're gonna actually make it even better right now. So today what we're going to be installing is the coil kit for the DH38. This is the same kit that they use for both the M1 series as well as the older series as well. Same kit works on both of the shocks here. A couple of the questions that I had was, is the spring any different from a RockShox boxer? Well, I happen to have a RockShox boxer here. I'll go ahead and lay this out just so you guys can get an idea. It is a couple of inches shorter than a RockShox boxer spring. So simply put, these are not compatible with the Olin's kit. One of the things that they do that RockShox doesn't, RockShox color codes theirs, which of course, you know, at some point that powder coating is going to start chipping off of there. That's going to be inside of your shock bath, so on and so forth. Whereas Olin's does not do that. They actually leave it in a raw color and they use color coded, uh, I guess heat shrink, I guess is really what this is. So that's kind of a nice touch. If we take a look at the um, adjuster here, this is actually for setting uh, preload on the shock itself. As you kind of click through this guy, this entire shaft actually moves down. This is an anodized aluminum piece. These are not plastic. This is really kind of a nice little touch here, but they also put a nice piece here at the top that allows the shock to spin should it get into bind. So that of course is a nice little plus. Of course, all of this is going to be applied with functional grease before we put this in there so that these can move around. They do the same thing on the shaft itself. Now on the shaft, you'll notice that it does have this washer here. Of course, this is going to be nice and lubed up again, just keeping the bind down to a minimum. The bottom out spring on here, you'll notice is actually fairly stiff. Of course, that's if you ever bottom this bad boy out, but more importantly, these holes that they have here on the shaft. You can come in here and knock this pin out and slide this down to really whatever level that you want, all the way down to, I believe, 150 millimeters of travel. At the top, or I should say the bottom of the shock here, this is going to be what we're actually going to screw into it. So that way we get this guy nice and tight. Also has a nice bottom out bumper here as well. But more importantly is going to be this cap here, whoo, down here at the end. This is nothing more than just a cap. We no longer have any air adjustments or anything else inside of here. That just being nothing more than just a cap so that we can secure this guy in place. So having said that, guys, let's go ahead and start tearing the other one apart. We'll get this bad boy installed. All right, so we've gone ahead and removed the lower legs. One good thing about taking these guys here at the top, guys, make sure you always loosen this top crown before you unthread this guy. Otherwise, you're going to have a bit of trouble pulling this guy out. But this is our air spring cartridge. Now, what's neat about this is I didn't let any pressure out of this. In fact, Olin states that you can actually basically preload these guys, take them to a race, try different settings without making changes. Of course, if you have multiples of these, but this is essentially what we're swapping out. We're taking out the air cartridge and we're replacing it with the spring cartridge. Let's see how this compares next to each other here. All right, so there you got it, guys. This is basically the two sitting side by side in comparison. One side, of course, being the air side on the lower there, the spring side on the top. Um, looks like, uh, you know, obviously same length, all that wonderful stuff. We're gonna go ahead and get this other component installed. All right, so as you prepare to install this first piece, the first thing you're going to notice is as well, there's uh, there's no hex head on the top of this, no bolt pattern per se. So how in the world do you get this guy to be nice and tight in there to seat this O-ring and all that? Well, you actually have to remove this cap here. Now, this is my run of the mill, you know, 28 millimeter uh, socket that I have sanded flat. That way I don't booger up the top of all of my forks and whatnot when I go to remove them. But this will actually fit directly onto it and actually, if you can do both at the same time, you can hold that guy in place. You can look down inside there. You can see the little hex head. I'm going to drop my two millimeter Allen in there. Go ahead and untwist that guy. I actually used pliers the first time to get it loose. But once you do that, you can then remove this top cap. Now, once you get this top cap removed, be careful. Hold it all together because you're going to have some parts that are going to come apart here. Obviously, the screw, the cap itself, which has a couple of ball bearings in it. Make sure you don't have those fall out and drop in there, as well as the shaft will come apart. But you're going to notice that's a cassette tool, right? Same design here. So we're going to use a cassette tool to drop down inside of here and be able to tighten this guy, obviously to its appropriate torque. So now we're going to go ahead and apply some functional grease to the top of this guy. And really what we're trying to do, and this is keyed by the way, guys, you've got a couple of little nubs here. Hopefully you can see those. Maybe if I get them close enough to the camera, you can see them. They are keyed. They are keyed in here. So you want to kind of just 
spin it around till it goes in there. Um, I use that grease actually for really the main purpose of just simply making it to where this thing will stay in place when I slide it in there and torque it into place. Um, also you want to do come up here and uh, apply some more of this functional grease and try to get it both on the top side and the bottom side of this little kind of bearing, if you will, this little washer. That way when the, the coil does happen to hit bind, of course, this thing can kind of spin around and, and move freely and obviously not bind up the coil. But we'll go ahead and get this guy lubed up, get her installed, jump back in here. So we've got that guy installed. We can go ahead and lube up that spring and get ready to drop that guy in. So go ahead and get this guy nice and lubed up, paying particular attention to both of the tapered ends, making sure that the entire thing is coated all the way down and through on both sides here. All right, to go ahead and do this component, we're gonna make sure we get plenty underneath this spring, or I'm sorry, underneath the washer here, so that that guy has plenty of this functional grease, not only to support the spring, but also should it need to rotate. Now with the bottom out spring here, you definitely wanna to try to get some inside there too, because that of course is where that spring is going to be compressing. So try to get some down in there. I actually may grab a Q-tip and try to get some more in there as well, but something that'll just get all the way down inside there and then we can install this. So we've got the spring installed. Now we'll go in here and actually do this. Now they do have a tool designed specifically for this. Um, obviously I do not have that tool. So it's a pair of 90 degree snap ring pliers will definitely work in a pinch. Um, just to get this guy nice and tight. That way we ensure that this does not come loose, but we'll go ahead and get this guy all buttoned up here. So per the book, 15 milliliter in each leg of the Owens goal ear. Go ahead and throw 15 in that guy and get a reload for the other one. And 15 into the spring side. Make sure we got all that goodness in there. All right. Now all we got to do is slide these guys back down to where they line up. Sometimes you can use your finger here. Sometimes it requires a tool. There we go. There's that one. Keep working her down a little bit till we get down to the spring side. In fact, if you put a wrench in there, you can really see where it's going to line up a whole lot better. There we go. Make sure she's seated all the way down. Put the nuts on here. And we'll go ahead and throw the old 14 on here. Hold that while we tighten this guy down a bit. This just has to pull that O-ring down in there just to where it's snugged up nice and tight. Do the same thing here on the other side. And we'll go ahead and throw this adjustment piece back on here. This is keyed. You're gonna kind of wiggle it around till you feel it drop into place. Throw the old two millimeter Allen on there just to get her started. And a 14 mil will actually hold this in place. Although I've grabbed a 13. There we go. There's a 14 mil on there. Okay. Let's go ahead and tighten that guy up and we'll go ahead and put the caps on as well. Last but not least, throw the caps on here. And you may notice I am reusing my old caps. I'm not gonna use the brand new one just so in case I ever lose one, I've got a brand new freshie waiting in the wings for me. Um, these are also already scratched up and whatnot. So might as well just reuse them, nothing wrong with them. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna go give an on-site review of this. I do have a 180 pound spring in here. That's what they recommend for a 180 pound rider. I'm actually about 170 pounds uh, with gear 185, 183, somewhere in that range. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Certainly, hopefully you learned something, but uh, guys, happy shredding and we will see you out on the trails. Have fun.